Now let's see the concept of overlap register window that is used in RISC type of computer, right? And so it provides the passing of parameters and avoid the need for saving and restoring the register value, right? So if there is another uh, call at that time, again we need to uh, use those registers for storing and all. So that thing will be omitted using this overlap register window. Because in this, some register will be said. Each procedure call that results in the allocation of new window consisting of a set of register from the register file. Each procedure call activates a new register window by incrementing pointer while the return statement decrement the pointer and cause the activation of the previous window. So your, there is a pointer which indicates which is the current window. <clears throat> so window for adjacent procedures have overlapping registers that are said to provide the passing of parameters and results. So between two procedure calls, there is some add register which is used to pass the parameters. Only one register window is activated at any given time the pointer that indicate the active window. Mm -hmm. Now these are the registers you can see R0 to R73. Right? So if actually you see there are 64 registers here and 10 registers here. Right? And this is a circular fashion. Right? R0 to R15, these are the R0 to R15. Right? N register that are global registers, right? Now there are a procedure call, right? This B, this A, C, D. So some registers are local to those, and some registers are common between those. So this is common between C and D, and this is common between B and C. So you can see adjacent call. We have some common register, right? So here we have some common registers. Here we have some common registers, right? I think six common registers here adjacent side. So these are uh, registers and some local register around ten for C. Okay. Hmm. So this is process C. This is process B. This is A and and this is in circular fashion. Okay. <clears throat> so, number of global register that is indicated by G, number of local register in each window that is L, number of registers common to two windows that is C, and number of windows that is W. So, if you want to find the window size, window size, how we can find out? Particular window size, so particular procedure window size means how many registers are active in that. So that is how many locals through to their process, how many adjacent uh, registers. So C means number of registers common to two windows, right? Plus your global registers. So if you see this, then that is 10 plus 12 plus 10, right? So C is 6. Because you can see the common register, this side is 6, this side is also 6, so 6, 10 and 6 plus this global 10, so 32 window size and this window size is active in particular time. So I assume for process A, for process A, this, uh, process A, this 32 registers are allocated. Now there is another call B. What happened? Another register window will be activated. Another register will be activated 32, and this is also 32. In this, 10 global are common, 10 global this can also access, and the 6, six register that is adjacent between process A and B, common to A and B, these 6 registers. Right? So, whenever A want to pass some parameters to B, then they can use this 6 for this right and at a time any one window is
and you can say this is oval so register needed in the processor so that is l plus c into w plus your <coughs> global register so global register 10 how many window you have so you can see we have four window so we want to allow this much and for each we have 10 local and one adjacent we have two edges, but if you consider one process, then this is a circular fashion. So you can consider this. Right? So 74 registers we have in this uh, total CPU. So thank you very much. This is the end of this unit, central processing unit.